new portfolio for applying for Glasgow School of Art. Um, this this video has been like requested um, since I uploaded my e-folio. I thought I was just going to speak about my um, experience in applying to art school, what i done. Obviously I was applying for third year so this is, I suppose it's a bit different for first years. Um, you might see that your portfolio looks a hell of a lot different from mine. It might be more experimental rather than like finished pieces um, or finished projects. However, I felt that just showing you like what a portfolio could look like, that it may help you on your journey to applying for art school. I started off with looking at my e-folio, which was what I made the video about last time. Um, I'll link that up somewhere where the wee tap comes up. I suggest looking at that before looking at this one because that's the step before. So when you're applying through UCAS, first thing you do is submit an e-folio. Um, so you want to have a good strong e-portfolio before you use your artwork to create a physical folio to take to like an interview. So the first thing I done was I looked at my e-folio um, and I found the standard pieces. I had a look at how I'd arrange things, how things work together, um, just to figure out a kind of like a flow. I went to a lot. I went to every open day, pre-application day, like all the kind of days that the uni that I was applying to, which was Glasgow School of Art. I went to all of the opportunities that I could get to get into the art school, to speak to the tutors, to speak to the people who will be looking at my application and who will be interviewing me. And I got as much advice as possible. Um, took a notebook with me and I jotted down every bit of information that I could possibly receive. One bit of advice that I got, one thing they want to see in your physical portfolio is more work. They want to see stuff that you never showed them in your e-folio. And I just tried to show like experiments. I didn't like it wasn't just all about the final pieces, it was about things that you had made and stuck in your sketchbook. Like for example, some of my stuff in here is like little kind of wild experiments that I done that. I put them in my portfolio because they're good and they work alone. But they're also su supplementary to final pieces and it kinda just shows like another note that I've taken is they want to see what you do in your studio, not just not just your final artworks. And whilst I was making my portfolio, I was going to a portfolio evening class um, at GSA. This is geared more towards first and second years. However, I felt like being in the actual environment and having people that have actually worked on these things before give you advice and have seen like thousands of portfolios every year, I felt it would be really beneficial to me. It helped more with the preparation for interview, for um, making my portfolio as in like how they, how GSA prefer it laid out instead of just kind of universal. I found out that GSA prefer an A1 paper folio with no sleeves, they like the 25 or so pages to be stacked up um, in a nice portfolio case. Easy to flick through, easy to just kind of glance, um, your pages to work well beside each other, stuff like that. I started out by, which was advice given at the evening class, I laid out 25 sheets of A1 paper <laughs> on the floor, which took up so much room, I'll insert a photo as well. I basically just started laying out my work. So I put my work on these pieces of paper, blue tacked things on, moved them about. I just wanted to see what, what worked where, what looked best with what. Um, and it turned out so, so helpful because I could see my whole folio as a whole. And I could also see it as in like the two slides that were going to be sitting next to each other. Um, so that was really a, like such a beneficial thing to do, like just find yourself a big space on the floor and just lay out all your slides and like rake through your artwork. That's what I done. I raked through everything I'd ever made. Like drawings, even if they were like, I mean I do stuff like pet portraits and stuff. I brought them in. I thought like they're no, never going to be in my folio but you need to try it. You need to get everything, every piece of experimental work you've done, every maquette, every experiment, like if it's sculpture, if it's painting, if it's sketching, if it's a sketchbook that you take on the train every day, bring it in to like wherever you're setting up your slides. 
and just put it down. Put stuff on your slides and it's, sometimes you'll surprise yourself. Like I put in, at the evening class we done like an experimental drawing and stuff and a lot of the stuff I felt was really crap and I'm, I'm a very like linear person and I felt like everything was so linear and I was trying to do these kind of things I don't even remember what the experiments were um, and I was like they're just, they were just really random um, but they supplemented other things in my folio and I didn't know that until I put them on the bit of paper next to something else. The other thing they like to see um, and I found out when I was laying my things out is maquettes but of course you can't put them in paper but you can sometimes put small things in paper so I had like latex samples and um, crocheted wire, small experiments that were 3D, obviously I was applying for sculpture so this was really helpful for me. Um, I, I was sticking these things onto these papers, I was, I was creating 3D objects come out from my folio, um, but I also took along lots of uh, small experimental uh, pieces or maquettes um, in like a backpack to my interview. So going on to my actual folio um, and just kind of showing you guys what mine looked like. I'm not going to do a flip through because I kind of done that in my intro just to kind of give you an idea of how things work together. Um, however, I don't want to put too many ideas into people's heads because it's something that's so personal. Like, if you take someone's portfolio and you try and like mimic it or um, take too many ideas from it, you're gonna you're gonna lose yourself. Once you're in an interview, you're not gonna know what to say because you're, you, they catch you off guard. It, it's it's one of those things where you need to have spent so much time with your portfolio and really understand it and really know what you love about it, what what you don't like about it, what how these things work, why do they work together. You need to know these things because they ask you about it. They expect you to have put all that labour and love into your portfolio. Um, I had a A1 black zip folio, um, just your typical, it had ring binds in it which obviously I never used because they prefer no sleeves in GSA, I don't know about, Ed Edinburgh don't interview so I don't know about like Dundee or anybody else that you're applying for obviously. So I started off with, when you opened my portfolio, I got my first kind of slide I suppose we'll call them. Um, which had a kind of sculptural experimental piece on it which was quite eye-catching um, and on the left hand side which was obviously the folder I had stuck my CV on it so my CV was obviously not that great because at the time of my interview it was at the start of 2018 so I hadn't really done much because most of my things that I'd done for my CV were throughout 2018. I have a decent amount of stuff to put into a CV to show that I'm quite serious about this and this is going to be my career. Um, another tip that they gave me in the kind of open days was to have a link to anything that showed your artwork so if you have a website put a link in there if you have uh, social media if you show your portfolio through Instagram put a link in there for it so it's easy for them to find because they can have a look at it. So on the bottom of my CV I had the link to my website where most of my work was um, and it was good photographs, good quality photographs on my website as well. So like moving on to my first page uh, it's important to have your slides that sit beside each other complement each other um, so I, the way I kind of worked it was having slides next to each other that were from the same project, obviously grouping projects together. Because I was applying for third year, I wanted to show that it wasn't just loads of random work that I was making. It was things were put into context, things related to each other, things were from the same project. Your slides were obviously uh, sculptural piece and a sketchbook page, which also had some wire. It was kind of very 3D. I wanted them. I wanted to be clear that it was sculpture that I was interested in. I wanted to show that that is how I work. I work in 3D, um, and even though things like sketchbook pages, um, I was sticking these things in. I was creating that coming off the page. I also left like when I stuck my sketchbook page in. I left notes in there. I left writing because I wanted them to see how I was thinking when I was doing these things. And I felt that was something that was quite important. 
I showed experimental work before I showed final pieces as well. Um, so I wanted them to see how I was getting somewhere rather than this is what I've produced and this is how I got there. So it was more like capturing an interest, like oh what could that be about, um, how do these relate and then on the next slide it would be this is how I brought all these aspects together into an artwork. Another piece of advice I got from the open day was to make sure that your images are high quality. Like they don't want to see bloody images in your portfolio, it needs to look very professional and well put together and well presented. I'm quite, I'm quite minimalistic when I come to these things so I wanted mine to be clean um, and quite like sleek. I wanted high quality photographs. I paid a photographer to take some photographs of my work um, and she's done a really good job. Um, and I think that was just that was a huge contribution to my portfolio and my e-folio because I had these great images that showed my work in great context and also great quality. You could really see all the detail. It's also important how you lay out your work. So I had like a lot of groups of three, um, but I didn't want to present all the groups of three, like images or prints, for example in the same way, so I had some landscape, so you had to kind of move around the portfolio um, and some portrait um, and to be honest it was just whatever worked best for the images and how they worked well to get and for sculpture I also included lots of printmaking and life drawing into my um, portfolio because these are things I'm interested in, they don't just want to see what you're going to do when you're there, they, they want to see an interest in portfolio. If you're an interesting person and you have interest in hobbies and um, things that you like to do that are RA and quite different, they want to see that. Do you know what I mean? They want interest in people studying there. They don't. Although I showed a strong interest in sculpture, I did still have things like printmaking, but I also showed the more sculptural side of printmaking. As you can see in these woodcuts. I, I didn't put the print in from this piece, I put the two plates in because I felt like they were more interesting than the actual finished piece in regards to my portfolio. I like One thing that I really love is woodcut and it's not just the print, I mean I love the print, I love the texture of the print, I love how you can see it's came from a 3D object because it's obviously a relief print, but I loved the plates. I just fell in love with the plates that I had made and I stuck them into my portfolio because if I thought they were interesting, I knew that the lecturers were going to feel like that was a really interesting take on printmaking. I also included like general drawings and paintings um, and collage. I wanted to show like my personality through. Um, there was these kind of, kind of bold colours and just quite different aspects and takes. So for example, I had like paintings on like banana paper from like the supermarket which has like interesting rips and um, uh, cutouts and stuff in the paper um, that complemented the sketch that was on it. I also painted on cardboard which was more 3D so a lot of my things were coming out of my portfolio, they weren't just stuck flat. I also liked to include a lot of experimental work so things like this piece where I used bleach on it, it's a very common experiment to do but I just felt like I had another piece with the same experimental technique which was more um, accurate and, and more detailed but I actually felt like the more experimental brush strokes were just so much more interesting. A lot of my work was about quite hard hitting subjects um, and I wanted to make that clear in my presentation and um, so I used a lot of experiments that were quite gory and quite uncomfortable feeling, like created an uncomfortable atmosphere. Um, and this obviously mirrored in my final pieces because that's the kind of atmosphere that I was looking to create. And I, I wanted to create that feeling in my portfolio as well. So a lot of the visuals that I used were quite disturbing. Um, but they were also quite interesting in textures and, and wondering why things were together. For example, for this, this latex piece, I have a piece of ripped condom next to it. Now the context of this, the final piece of these experiments were about rape culture, so it kind of gave you that kind of like in, like a small smidge of an insight without giving too much away. I also included like 
handmade condoms that were for the next project, which I had actually made at my at my evening course, which was about desire and virginity and you know things like that. It kind of I just kind of like this was an unfinished piece, but the experiments were so strong that I felt that they just needed to be included and it needed to be something that was a bit of an eye opener. And some of these pieces had such bold statements that it was just something that I felt like they really needed to see to to see the depth of my work. So that was basically my part portfolio and some interesting things that I kind of learned along the way. Um. I also got a lot of external opinions on, so I put my portfolio together, I photographed it in the order that it was in and I emailed it to lecturers, I emailed it to lecturers of the evening class, I, obviously well before the interview, I emailed it to lecturers from my college, various lecturers, I emailed it to my mum who's not arty but like, people who maybe wouldn't understand your work, they need to be um, interested, they need to be intrigued at what you're talking about in this portfolio, what you want people to think about. Um, I showed it to my partner, who again, he's not arty, he's creative, but he's, it's good to see other people's take on visually how things look. Never ever go with the first draft that you've got, because you can always make it better. Thanks for watching this video, I really hope it helped you. Um, if you've got any questions, just comment them down below and I'll answer them. I think like, this is one of the most important videos that you can watch and that personally that I'm going to have made because it's something that I really wanted when I was applying for art school was just someone who was there to tell me. I mean, I was like messaging people who were on the course and just, just asking them all these questions, just really wanting to know because it does, it betters your chance. The more you know, the better your chance is of getting in because you know, you, you want to know what they like and what they look for. Um, so yeah, I really hope you have enjoyed this video and if, again, anything you want to know, feel free to just comment below. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more art school content and have a nice day. Bye.